On February the 3rd, after having been suffering from a number of physical and mental health issues, including bipolar disorder and a condition known as Peyronie's disease, Alphonse Williams, the grandson of Richard Williams and the nephew of tennis pros Venus and Serena Williams, took his own life. He was only 21 years old. Alphonse's mom, Sabrina Williams, who is also the half-sister of Venus and Serena Williams, did an interview with the British tabloid, The Sun. She told them that she knew her son had long struggled with his mental health. She also told them that she knew of a previous incident where he had attempted to take his own life once before. Sabrina Williams' son um, had recently found out that he had Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease is a condition in which the penis curves and with um, Sabrina's son already dealing with mental health issues and finding that out, I believe she said he went into a deep depression but she didn't know how bad it was, how bad his depression was. So she does believe that him being diagnosed with Peyronie's disease did play a big part in him taking his own life. She told them, I knew he was on loan and God called in that loan. Sabrina lives in Las Vegas and shared a home with her son Alphonse and his older brother Elijah who's 23. She stated that she only knew the devastating impact Peyronie's disease can have on mental health after her son's passing when she read about the condition online. Alphonse who also had bipolar disorder felt like his life was over and he's believed to have taken an overdose of unknown medication. At this time, his autopsy results have not been released. Sabrina also stated that she and her children have had no relationship with her father, Richard Williams, whose story was chronicled in the 2021 movie, King Richard. She said that he had walked out on his family and became a millionaire while she and her siblings lived in poverty. Richard Williams married Sabrina Williams' late mom Betty Johnson in the early 60s and they had four children together. She alleges that he dumped his wife and kids walking out of the door to go buy her a bike and never returning home, then later marrying Venus and Serena's mom, Oracine. Sabrina said that the title of the movie King Richard is completely over the top. Sabrina stated, he thinks he's king of the world, but no one that's ever been around him thinks he's King Richard. It's an outrageous title, but truth be told, it fits him. She said he's not the king of the world. If you look at him psychologically, it's never been something he's achieved apart from his own head. He's lived only through two of his daughters, forsaking all of his other children, she said. She went on to say, those girls rose to the top while his other children had to suffer because of the choices that he made. She said after he left, we were raised in poverty. She said Richard Williams left her mom when she was only eight years old and her younger sister was eight weeks old. He made it his number one priority for his daughters Venus and Serena to become tennis professionals. Sabrina says she experienced two different childhoods before her father left them and after he left. She went on to say the first was okay because we had money but the second period was very difficult. She went on to say it was an instant change. If it wasn't for the churches that they belonged to, she doesn't think her mom would have made it. She laughs out loud that the first 30 years of his life were completely ignored in the movie King Richard by director Reynaldo Marcus Green. Sabrina said that despite being estranged from her dad, she still believes that he thinks about his first family. She said, I think it's just sad because there's no way that my dad doesn't think about me or my brothers and sisters. There's just no way in your life that you can put that to the side and not think about it. I feel sympathy for him like, dude, you need to come to terms with this. She said he hasn't forgotten us. He just put us into a compartment. You know that part of your world exists, but you don't want to deal with it. And that's a sad thing, she said. I can chase my dad around for the rest of my life in my head or I can come to terms that I believe my dad loves me in his own way. That's all I can do. Sabrina said that since her dad walked out on she and her siblings, she's only seen him a handful of times 
and it's unlikely that she'll see him again. And she went on to say, if he passes, she won't be going to his funeral. She said, I don't think I'll see him alive. I've even buried my dad in my head because I know I won't be able to attend his funeral. That's just not going to be an option. They're not going to let me. They won't even tell me. I'll find out from the media reports or a friend. It said that Richard Williams is now being looked after by another one of his sons and he's incapacitated and barely able to talk after having two strokes. Sabrina said a lot more in her interview with the son and although she's saying that she has come to terms with her dad walking out on them when she was a child, I do believe that she still is very hurt by him walking out on them. And I think he's around 79 or 80 years old right now. And with him being incapacitated and not really able to speak as they're reporting, she probably feels like even if she wanted to reach out to him or get some closure with him, with him being in the situation that he's in right now with his health, it's probably just no use. So, And I think that if he happens to pass away, that hurt and all those feelings may come bubbling up again that she probably thought was gone. And I can somewhat relate to her situation because the same thing happened to me and my mom and my siblings when we were coming up. When my dad got with my mom, he moved us out of a apartment in the projects to a four bedroom, two bath home. It wasn't like a rich upscale neighborhood that he moved us to, but it was a better neighborhood than the projects. But not long after he moved us out of the projects, my dad left my mom and his five children. I was five years old at the time. I remember coming home from school one day and I noticed some of the furniture was gone. And I think I asked my older sister like what had happened to the furniture. And she told me that my dad had left us. So in that way, I can somewhat relate to Sabrina because I held a resentment inside for my dad for many, many years and he never knew it. But our situations are a little different because my dad, when he left us, he didn't just leave and we never saw him again. He still came back around and he was still supporting us. He was providing for us. I remember him keeping my mom's yard cut. I remember him putting up big spotlights out outside of our house just to make sure our house was lit up. So he would still do things to provide for us and make sure that, you know, we were okay. And I can also understand how Venus and Serena being raised up in a home with their dad there present. I can also understand how they grew up to be so successful. There's no telling what or who I could have become. I believe had my dad not left us, I would have been so much more successful. And I say that because my dad was a very stern man. He was a tough disciplinarian. He didn't play. We didn't ask questions. We did what he said do when he said do it. And he had never disciplined me. I just had a fear of that man. And once my dad left our home, oh, I took full advantage of it, especially those teenage years. Oh yes. Even though I was only five, I knew that once he left, there was gonna be a shift in our home. I was gonna be able to get away with things that I wouldn't have been able to get away with if my dad was still in our home. But I also had a strong resentment for my dad inside of me. I held that for many years and I would later confront him with it when I got to be an adult. And that's why I say my heart goes out to Sabrina because if she has that same type of resentment and hurt inside for her dad, like the type of resentment that I had for my dad, just because of the fact that he left me and my siblings and my mom. I was later able to go to my dad and confront him about it and give him an opportunity to explain to me an explanation as to why he did what he did. Because I was so young, even if we were struggling or having hard times, I was too young to realize it or even know because I don't remember a time ever going hungry. I don't remember a time when the lights getting turned off or a bill not being paid. So I didn't experience that part of it. I just saw what it did to my mom. So that was the resentment that I had for my dad. And when I confronted my dad later as a grown woman, 
when it came out, it came out in anger. And all of those feelings that I had of hurt and resentment, it just came out because he thought I was too young to remember. And he was trying to give me like advice on a relationship that I was in. He was like telling me the type of man that I should be with. And when he said that, everything I remember being that five-year-old little girl coming home to a house that was half empty, all of that came out and I just unloaded on my dad. And I just told my dad, I remember, I remember everything. I remember what you did to my mom. I just let it all out and my dad didn't say a word. He just let me get it out. He let me vent. He sat there and he listened. He just sat there and he listened and my dad looked at me and he apologized to me. He told me he didn't have an excuse. He told me that he was wrong. He said that my mom was a good woman. He said she did nothing to deserve what he did to her. And he looked at me and he apologized. Once he apologized, all that resentment, all that hurt that I didn't even know that was still inside of me. Once my dad apologized and he didn't try to make up any excuses, he didn't give any reasons. He just said, I was wrong and I'm sorry. Once he did that, it was like such a weight. It was like a weight that had been lifted off of me. It was such a release and it felt so good. And I'm glad that I was able to have that conversation. And my dad has since passed away. But I am so thankful, so glad that I was able to have that conversation with my dad and for him to give me that apology, to take that weight off of me, to take that, that hurt, you know, that resentment of being a five-year-old little girl and coming home to my daddy being gone. All of that was gone. And I'm so thankful that I was able to get that from my dad while he was still here on this earth. So my heart goes out to Sabrina because I think that that's something that she needs to hear. And I'm sure it's something that she wants to hear. And it's sad to think that that's just something that she may never get. Thoughts and prayers for Sabrina Williams and her family during this time of loss. And she also said that she hasn't spoke to Venus or Serena. I think she said she hasn't seen them since um, she was a little girl. So I don't know what the reason is behind Venus and Serena not getting in contact with their sister because they have to know about her. And being that she's lost her son, you would think that they would want to reach out to her. I mean, they're sisters. That's their nephew. So I don't know, I'm not understanding that at all, why they wouldn't reach out, you know, at least just to give her condolences in the loss of her son, which is their nephew. Um, or did they just take on the attitude of their dad as if their sister just doesn't exist? Does somebody out there know, maybe can explain it to me, why Venus and Serena wouldn't reach out to their sister or hasn't reached out to their sister in all these years? Hmm. Inquiring minds want to know that.